Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have another type of reaction video. Now, the last video was very well received, so I'm going to continue doing so uh, until things change. But you guys have been liking it, so might as well come back with another one. And this time we have Dan Orlovsky. For those that are unaware of who he is, uh, in Cowboy circles, uh, he has been very critical of the Cowboys. Um, and he hasn't really criticized the Rams a whole lot for the same reasons, though, or for worse reasons at that. But um, that, that to be the topic of today's video is, you know, looking at Dan Orlovsky's talking points between the Dallas Cowboys and other NFL teams. And um, just see what's going on, because he has been known to be a massive hypocrite in the media and on top of that some form of his judgment that really irks me with how he has press pass credentials and stuff like that so that's going to be today's video um if you guys could do me a favor and like the video to help out in youtube's algorithm uh that'd be greatly appreciated along with subscribing and hitting the notification bell to stay around for more content like this that'd be awesome but without further ado let's go ahead and get started Let's flip it to the defensive no, side. No, we ain't flipping nothing. Okay. You, you crazy as hell. You think I'm going to let you get away with that. <laughs> it, like, he knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. I'm, I'm, supposed to have, I'm supposed to have a whole analysis about the defense <laughs> and what they what? did. <sighs> but you, you talking about no concern. No. For Matthew Stafford. Right. Dude, didn't we just sit here three weeks ago and you was really concerned about Dak Prescott? Is he going to turn into a Dak Prescott thing? I'm just asking, what, what's the difference? He got seven picks. Right. We're not talking about just yesterday. Well, one, I know one personally, and I don't know Dak Prescott, so that factors into this. Uh -huh. no, number two, the, the interest. But why are you not concerned about turning the, the football hell? over? Because. Like, we were concerned about Mahomes, too. Right, but there was, there was things mechanically with Patrick, right. and we also talked with Mahomes that a lot of those were tips and not on him. Right. I think there's been three over the course of the last month that have been tips or kind of um, dropped balls for interceptions for, for Matthew as well. I'm not pretending that they're not real. No, but I, you're, you're attributing them to mindset, forcing the ball downfield. That I understand. That's correct. what I saw on the, the throw into triple coverage, correct. which was the more egregious one. Marcus, I'm not sure that mindset's going to change, so I'm no, not with our got, friend yet. Yeah, listen, but, he... He can't do it, Dan. But, he can't do it in the playoffs. Mark, but what do you mean you can't do right. it in the playoffs? He can't turn the football over like he's oh, been doing. Of course, but that's any quarterback. But, but for you saying you're not concerned, it's not like it just started. But I, I also watched him go 14-14 in the second half. I've also watched him in the fourth quarter be the best quarterback in football. Absolutely. We've seen Taylor two halves with a lot of quarterbacks. But for you to say you're not concerned about seven picks in like the last three weeks, Listen, we'll get that, that sounds kind of we'll crazy. Seven turnovers. <laughs> seven turnovers. And see, that's the main thing I'm talking about, man, is like, the idea that you don't know the quarterback personally, so you're judging them differently. And um, that's kind of our starting point. I understand that that wasn't like a, a, an actual like full-on video, but like the reason I showed that first was because um, when it comes to Dan Orlovsky, we need to understand of where his mindset is because then when we go into these next two videos and listen to what he's like saying about both these teams, um, it's going to give us a better understanding of like okay, why does he think the way he thinks? So, like, he's not, ex like, it feels like he's creating excuses for Matthew Stafford, but he's trying to downplay. Now, again, I'm not trying to sit here and say that Dak Prescott is a perfect quarterback by any means whatsoever, but I think what makes it worse, and this is why I don't think he's a qualified guy to be talking about football, is because if you are using your personal relationships with other athletes and how you know them to determine how you're going to view them, you don't deserve to have a job in the media, and that's point blank, period. I think it's wrong to be like, oh, well, I don't know this person personally, so I'm going to judge them differently. Like, that is some petty stuff right there. So, um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at how he feels about the Rams, especially with Matthew Stafford struggling of recent. So before I begin these clips, just as a heads up, I know I put this in the comments of the previous video. The reason I don't show the footage is because I'm avoiding copyright strikes right now, um, especially with the fiasco I had to go through a couple months ago. So I'm hoping I'll be able to show them in the next month. So um, I just want you to be aware of that, but I'll describe what's going on here. Matthew Stafford is another quarterback that as we're heading now towards winning time for him, I said this earlier in the show, Dan, he's never had expectations in the NFL. like So this, Dan's right? just like holding win. up a zero he's like this. He's always been a good quarterback. Like, he's um... had, well, he's on a bad <laughs> team or a bad franchise. And 
you know, there wasn't that same pressure to win. He's got that now. How concerned are you with his performance yesterday? Hope he's doing and this. And the fact that these pick doing, sixes doing are becoming too often a, a common theme with him. I'm zero concerned. I don't know if you could see me, Alan. I'm holding up a giant. I'm zero concerned. Oh, I see you now. Okay, okay why is I'm he not zero. concerned? Zero. Uh, this is why. Huh? Back back to back weeks, back to back weeks of ten o'clock start times for this football team right around the holidays. Those aren't excuses, but unless you've lived that life, it's challenging. It is hard, and they have found a way to win the football game. Now, I also want to give a little bit of credit to Chuck Clark. The first interception, the one that's a pick six. Do I think it's a it's a poor play by Matthew? Yeah, it's not a great play. I also think it's a great disguise and kind of fool job by Chuck Clark. There are not five guys in the NFL that I trust more with the ball in their hands down in the fourth quarter than I do Matthew Stafford. (laughs) There is a reason why he has 42 game-winning drives in the fourth quarter. I'm going to get to that momentarily. For a guy that everyone wanted to rail on yesterday, he was 14 of 14 in the second half. 14 of 14. I don't care if you're playing against air. That's pretty darn good. And his connection with Odell Beckham... Seems very real right now. I'm not <laughs> tripping over Matthew Stafford. They, they have found a way to win two games on back-to-back road trips with 10 o'clock start times. So, like, I do understand that, like, the whole time portion of this is a legitimate factor. Like, I think that when you're going from West Coast to East Coast, it's hard. I mean, even vice versa. Um, but, um, look. The fact that now that this uh, audio you're hearing, or rather, like the video that I'm watching, was from after the Ravens game. I personally look at it this way: Matthew Stafford is a quarterback that knows how to put, like he knows how to play the position. He's not a terrible quarterback, but the thing is, is that he has the most inopportune moments where he just makes mistakes, and it it happened recently versus the 49ers. Now. Uh, I I haven't uh, been able to take a look at the footage for Dan after the 49ers game. But, like, the reason I bring that up is because, like, okay, I'm not concerned because Matthew Stafford has these many game-winning drives and the, the Rams can do this. Yes, he didn't play so well. Like, he's coming up with the most lame excuses for the Rams. And listen, the Rams themselves as a team are good. Like, they're not a terrible football team. The problem is is that they don't know how to close out games or rather, they've just made a lot of mistakes. Matthew Stafford, I think, has four pick sixes. And I, I know he threw three of them in, in three straight weeks. Another thing is the Odell Beckham connection. Like, yes, Odell has played a lot better with the Rams than he did with the Browns. But the part that I don't understand, and this is funny, the reason why I laughed was because when that final pass was thrown in overtime, it was thrown to Odell. And <laughs> he threw an interception. And it's just like Matthew Stafford has thrown an, an obscene, obscene, insane amount of interceptions in the past couple of weeks. Yes, Dak Prescott had a stretch of games where we were concerned about how he was playing, especially because he was coming off an injury. Matthew Stafford was playing fully healthy this entire season. So I don't want to hear it, you know. Uh, but look. You know, I'm going to just see if he has anything else to say here. If not, we're going to go to the next video, um, which will be when the Cowboys lost the Arizona Cardinals. So we'll see if there's anything left here. If so, we'll continue. If not, we'll move on. Okay, so there was... Okay, there we go. Uh, Okay, there was nothing there um, for the rest of that video. So we're moving on to how he's fed up with the Cowboys because they're an undisciplined team. Now, um, before I continue, I'm sorry. I just wanted to stress this. The thing that I don't understand about with um, Dan Orlovsky's obsession with Matthew Stafford, like he mentioned, oh, I know, Matt, he wouldn't make these mistakes, and he, you know, he makes up for them, and he talks about, like, how he went 14 for 14. No one cares if he went 14 for 14 in the second half. All that matters is, did you make a, bu- a bunch of mistakes? You know what I mean? So stop with that. Like, seriously, man. So let's go ahead and get started with this. He's fed up with the Cowboys. Confidence is there, but look at this. The Cardinals win means we'll have to wait another week to decide the winner of the NFC West. ESPN's FPI gives them a 33% chance to win the division, and the Cowboys' loss drops them from the two seed to the four seed, ending their hopes of earning that crucial first round bye. So, guys, let's get into this. Rex, what was your biggest takeaway from this Cowboys loss? Biggest take is that, look, this seems not as good as I thought. 
and quite honestly, that, that's the take. All right, their defense played the way I thought they would. They're not great, but they played the way I thought they would. It's their offense. And here's my take. All we hear about is how great this team is, how talented this team is. Sure. Well, are they really that talented? Because Amari Cooper showed up once all season. That was week one. Mm. To have a guy with elite talent. That's not that's true. The, this is the, the, the Vikings the game, like, he yeah, did show up. Touch. So How many other catches? Two, three? Like, that's it. So, yeah. to me, yeah. they need to play like they're superstars, like they're supposed to be. Here's what I know. This team is not has not been worth a darn at running the football mm -hmm. since Dak's injury. It's not just him. Dak's not the same guy, okay, to me, since the injury. He doesn't run anymore. And this team was second in the National Football League in running the football. Now they're 26 since that injury. Mm -hmm. So you tell me, that's the same football team? In the playoffs, you better get back to running the football, recognize who you are, and Dak, you've got to use your legs, especially I mean, in the red zone. It's an inconsistent team, right? It's a team sure. that you look at and they've become the Dallas Cowboys of the last quarter century. The team that we look at on paper and we think that they should be extremely good in certain positions, but it's not showing in critical situational mm -hmm. football mm -hmm. moments. And that's what we're seeing from this team. You we're can hear Dan team in the background. <laughs> He's going like, receivers right. we know you have guys that have to turn the football over make splash plays defensively and you have a quarterback that earned a 140 million dollar contract and none of those people are making the plays That's they it. need to mm -hmm. in critical football yes. moments against good teams now we saw them blow out the Washington football team and I said to myself when they play at their elite level when the stars are the stars this is a team that you don't want to play but having an opportunity in your house against the Arizona Cardinals a team that you can see down the line and actually going out and landing a. This game wasn't a three-point game. Correct. They actually drew it closer mm -hmm. at the end. And when you lose this way, when you don't have, when you don't control the clock, right, when you don't manage yeah. the clock and you allow someone to run out the clock, right. those are three things you yeah. can't do and want to yeah. beat a good team. So here's the thing. Yeah. There's nothing nor no one on the Dallas Cowboys that I trust right now. Mm -hmm. Their stars, you talked about it, RC, in critical moments, yep. did not play like stars. I saw <laughs> drops from Ezekiel Elliott. I saw drops from Tony Pollard. I saw blocks on their offensive line by a Hall of Famer and a Hall of Famer that they both missed. I saw their $140 million quarterback on third down yeah. not play well. This is a part of this football team that why many of us don't trust them is because in critical moments, their stars have not played like stars. I also think this is an incredibly undisciplined yeah. football team. Oh, real talk. Eight times Brutal. yesterday, eight times they had critical penalties in really situationally bad moments. Bad and I talked about it. Third down yesterday was bad for this football team. Mm -hmm. They were one of seven on third and long. They averaged third and nine. And I think a big deal was because the way Dak Prescott played. I know he's a really good player. Yeah. He's not playing good enough on he's third not, down. Man. This football team is undisciplined. This football team is – their stars aren't playing well when they need them the most. Do, you, do we still feel like this team is a contender? They're a, a contender. real legitimate contender. Well, they they should be. Because if you could turn the ball over on defense the way they do, yeah. and offensively, if you can run the way they did at the beginning of the year, but second they can't. in the national football. Yeah. But they no, can't. But they yeah. haven't. But they can't. That's yeah. a, a big difference between can't that's and That's a good point. It. Fair. Fair. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. to me, that's it. So, they got to get back. We saw you're wearing your eagle green jacket. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Why they it? run the football? And, and they did the same mistake that Dallas is making now. All right. You've got all these weapons. Hey, the, the best thing you can do is run the football for yeah. your team. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this. Oh, my you're God. Right. Dan, on the shut the you, hell you up. The big guy back, Smith, playing left tackle. He got destroyed yeah. by Chandler Jones. Yeah. A well, couple he got times whipped. Today. Like, like that one Chandler Jones, that was his brother whipping somebody. Right. Oh, wow. John Jones. Not John. All right. I've yeah. seen enough. So you see where I'm getting at here? You see the energy that Dan Orlovsky has towards the Rams and the Cowboys? Now, look, you could say that I'm being biased because, yes, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I'm trying to objectively look at this. But I want to be honest here. And can we just be honest with ourselves here? How is it? How, how is it that he wants to be like, oh, their stars aren't playing like stars and da-da-da-da-da? What about the Rams, Dan? The Rams laid an egg of a game versus the 49ers. A game that they were up 17 to nothing. And you had nothing to say from what I saw other than, hey, I'm fine. Yes, I understand that the recordings you see here are a week old. But the point I'm trying to get at, and the reason I took those two clips, was because 
it shows Matt Stafford, number one, is just as critiquable as Dak Prescott. And the fact that Dan Orlovsky, as a person that is on national television, says the stuff that he says and gets paid to do it is embarrassing. F*** off, Dan. Like, th this guy... I'm telling you, he does not deserve to be on TV. Yes, I know a lot of people like to meme about him running out the back of the end zone and how he's if he's qualified. I get it. Not everybody has to play in the NFL to know what they're talking about. But the fact that you played the, the quarterback position and you st are that goddamn mind-numbingly stupid to try, or rather, you know, because trust me, I've heard him say a couple other things, especially about Justin Fields, where that's a whole nother thing. But... I'm sick and tired of this, man. Dan Orlovsky is one of the biggest hypocrites in all of sports media. And he just says that... Now, trust me, you're going to freaking see it when I talk about Emmanuel Acho, which he's going to be on the next on the docket. But uh, I'm going to wait till after the playoffs, uh, is, you know, or rather after the playoff game to see if he says anything. But I'm sick and tired of these guys in the media, specifically like these... Not, like, he was the biggest for Carson Wentz. Oh, what did Carson Wentz do? He wet the goddamn bed. In the last game of the season, it's a win and in against a goddamn 2-14 football team. Now, I haven't heard his point on Wentz, but I remember what he said about Wentz. This motherfucker trying to, you know, suck his goddamn d And then on top of that, you have this guy, like, criticizing Dak. Now, listen, I'm not saying that the Dak criticism wasn't warranted. I am looking for consistent talking points. If you are going to say that Matthew Stafford has no issues whatsoever and you have no problems with the Rams and their star power, then you shouldn't be saying that about the Dallas Cowboys. You thought, oh, let's not forget him thinking that the Dallas Cowboys were the third best team in the NFC East and they beat every single team twice. They swept them all. Get the hell out of here, Dan. Go f*** yourself. And, I, and it's not because I, it, that he's disrespecting the Cowboys. It's because he is, an ins he is an insult to all members of the sports media community. People who do this on YouTube for a hobby and for fun and do a lot better analysis than he does. Man, get out of here. And I think that's pretty much done it. I don't have much more to say other than Dan Orlovsky is one of the biggest hypocrites and like just two-faced guys in all of sports media. And I hope you guys, like, recognize this because going forward, I'm going to see what this guy does. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this second iteration. By all means, if you can like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.